you try to solve the problems in e with engines, related with engines, doesn't matter if are gasoline or diesel. One symptom, one, uh, one, one thing that is easy to see and uh, say too much information to you. The sound is, is important, but the most important, the smoke. The color of the smoke. The color of the smoke is critical. The color of the smoke is, uh, is, in my opinion, the most important thing. We are going to refresh. Today we are going to refresh all the concepts until today. From the beginning until today. Okay. We are going to analyze why smoke. Why smoke is because what, my friends? Coolant entering in the combustion chamber. Coolant, coolant, coolant. All right. And there are a lot of possibilities, no? We are going to check later. Coolant, you have humidity. Coolant or, or fresh water, no? Because in some cases, what happens if uh, the air filter is socket with water? Suction, humidity, and you have white smoke. All right, what about the black smoke? It's a rich mixture. Or it's a bad fuel. It's a fuel contaminated, no? With other with other additives, with other ingredients. When, when you visit, when you visit other places, and you and you fill the tank with bad fuel, you have those ingredients. All right, this is black smoke. Or also, uh, black smoke is typical the consequence of a clogged air filter. You remember what happened if the air filter is clogged? Why you have black smoke? You remember the air fuel ratio? Uh, if you try to uh, clog it, the air filter, avoid that the amount of air enter, the engine is intelligent and compensate with more fuel. The engine try to, to take that equation stable, no? If you reduce the, the air, the engine put more fuel. And now you have, you have black smoke. This is the typical black smoke. Uh, all right. Other 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 uh, common uh, color of the smoke is um, blue smoke. Uh, this is because what? Oil. oil is entering in the combustion chamber. How the oil enter in the combustion chamber? Possibilities. The number one. Number one. Number one. Problems on the valves. Problems on the train of valves. Mechanical problems on the head. No? The seals. You remember yesterday? Too much play in the valve. Um, yeah, it's lubrication problems on the on the on the head, on the valves. This is one possibility. Other possibility is less possible is piston rings. Oh, of course, if the piston rings are broken, the oil pass. No, but remember, remember that uh, you have always, always minimum three piston rings. The top one and the second one are compression, compression, compression rings. The bottom one is hollow. The oil enter here and return here. No? What is the meaning of that? This one in the bottom return the oil. You never have oil here passing through the through the through the piston rings. Of course if they are broken yes. But in normal condition no. In normal condition if you have blue smoke and the engine is running good with good compression, the problem is not on the piston rings. The problem is on the head for blue smoke. Everybody follow me? All right. Other possibility that later I am going to explain is on the turbo for blue smoke. You remember the turbo? What is the name of this side? Hot. And this one? Cold or, uh, or uh, fresh air, compressed air. When this where start the process in the turbo? Here, in the hot side. The smoke, the gases, the smoke, what happens? Spin, Spin this turbine. No? How many RPMs? Later we are going to study. What, what do you think the RPMs of this chap when the, when the engine is running? 1,500,000 no. RPMs. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Of course, you see the blades of this and the blades of this are opposite. Ah, if this is a spinning in this direction, this one suction from the middle. 
So, where is located the air filter in the turbo? It's here, it's here. Ah, suction the air, compress the air in the elliptical circumference here, and send the air, highly compressed, into the intake manifold. And now the intake manifold has atmospheric pressure entering, plus, plus this extra pressure. What is the name of that extra pressure? Push pressure, the push pressure coming from the turbo. Ah, okay. This is the turbo. Simple, no? This is the turbo. Pay attention. The turbo here have bearings, bearings, one seal and other seal. Two seals. What is the function of the seal? The oil enter here, lubricate the shaft, spinning at 1500,000 RPMs. Need good lubrication, no? Lubricate the bearings, keep the shaft lubricated and the oil return to the oil pan of the engine. Enter here, coming from the pressure of the oil. You remember the oil pump, pressurized, bearing, bearing, and the last one is this. Lubricate this and return. If those seals are broken, the oil no pass here and the oil no pass here because the seals, hydraulic seals. You remember those seals with lips? All right, excuse me, what happened what happened if this seal in the cold side is leaking? When the, when the turbo is spinning, suction fresh air, the fresh air suction that uh, oil, and the oil enter at high pressure into the intake manifold. Oil with air. And what is the consequence? Blue smoke. Normally the people, when the people uh, check the, the blue smoke say, Oh, problems on the valves, problem on the piston rings, la la la, and that's it. Mm -mm. And the turbo. In the turbo, it's very, very common if this seal is damaged. What happens if this seal in the hot side is damaged? You have oil on the water. You see the water, no, Captain? You see, oh, wow, this engine, a lot of oil. It's a fill of oil over, over the, the surface of the water. It's because this seal. And uh, what is the solution? remove the turbo and send the turbo to the machine shop. Don't try to fix it, the turbo by yourself. You don't have the tools. Send to the machine shop, they replace the bearings, they replace the seals, and they return the turbo in perfect condition. So, Normally, what is the color of this turbine? Look at the color. Aluminum. It's aluminum, no? It's, uh, uh, it's completely clean. And what is the color of this turbine? Metal. Uh, it's metal, but it's like a rust, no? Yeah? And, uh, but uh, no oil. No oil here and no oil here. If you have oil, it's because the seals are broken. And the other thing that later I am going to explain is when, when you remove the air filter and you try to move the chaff, that plate should be zero, no plate. If you have a little plate like this, that's, you have problem with, with bearings and seals. Okay, number one is ask to the customer questions about the color of the smoke. That's very, very important. Other thing that I recommend when I, I have a customer in the, in, the, in, the, in the line asking problems related with diesel engine, I said, okay, my friend, can you check the dipstick, the oil? What is the color? It's black because, okay, but it's good. Touch, you, you, you feel particles? Yes, I feel a little. Let me check the other, no, the other engine is completely different. This is like, okay. All right, pay attention. With the dipstick, I put oil in a paper like this. Yeah, napkins, white color. And I expose this one to the sun, 20 minutes. And I can see the metals dispersed. I can see aluminum, copper dispersed in the napkins when the oil, when the oil is evaporated. All right, my friend, finito. What is, what is the next step if you found that a lot of metal dispersed in the, in the sample of oil? Okay, take a sample of the oil in a plastic container and send the sample to the laboratory. It's not difficult, my friends, it's not difficult. You visit any dealer in your city, in your country, Caterpillar, uh, a Cummings, a Volvo, a MAN, any dealer and they have laboratory. And you say, I want to take a sample of oil of my engine. 
and they sell to you a small plastic bottle with a couple of instructions. The instructions are simple. In the plastic container, you suction a little amount of oil, you introduce the oil, you close the, the container, and in, in the label you fill the serial number of the engine, the model of the engine, the hours or miles, if it's a truck, the type of oil used. Oh, I use Rotella 20W40, Rotella W. The intervals that uh, you change the oil, and that's it. With that information, you send to the laboratory, $45, $50, depending on the laboratory. Next day, you receive the results, and we are going to analyze those results. Only analyzing the results, we know where is exactly in what corner is the problem. And we are going to do the same with other sample. Sample of coolant. We are going to send both samples, coolant and oil. And you don't need to touch the engine. You don't need to visit the engine. Only analyzing and using uh, a couple of tables that I create to analyze the oil and the coolant. All right? You can get those tables. OK, great. Simple questions. The color of the oil, the color of the smoke, the sound. You know your engine, and you know when the sound changed. You know when the sound is different. No, not because the exhaust pipe. The engine, the engine by itself. You are familiarized with your engine. In the engine room every day, you are familiarized. Other, other important information is uh, the gauge the temperature gauge in the dashboard, the needle is, uh, is, is a little up or down. Yes, it's a little up. It's not close to the red area, but it's more. This is a bad indication. Because you are familiarized where is located the needle in your engines normally, no? At operational temperature for oil pressure. And the same for temperature. Both of them, if, if they increase the temperature suddenly, or reduce the oil pressure, you have problems. You need to analyze the oil. The only way to know what happened internally is analyzing the sample of oil. Okay, guys? This is the only way. Before you disassemble, take a sample of oil. This is the difference between you guys, you engineers, and a regular technician with no background. 